Hey guys, welcome to the archery tech uh, segment uh, of uh, these videos. We're, we're really excited to actually be uh, bringing this to you. We're going to cover a lot of uh, really neat things, get, uh, get in depth when it comes to aerodynamics and aero performance and uh, really kind of break it down. We're going to have some great demonstrations uh, highlighting some of the um, advantages to paying attention to those small details when it comes to uh, aero building. Uh, front of center, you're going to hear that expression a lot. We're going to get into that and what that actually means and how it translates uh, out in the field. So we have a lot of great things that we're going to cover. But for today, we're uh, basically going to uh, take a look at uh, two uh, arrow processing tips that you can use uh, when it comes to building your arrows that will uh, make a difference when it comes to uh, arrow performance. Real basic ones, a lot of you guys might already uh, be incorporating this into your uh, building routine and, and that's that's great. Um, if you haven't tried it, uh, it's definitely worth uh, giving it a shot. And there's always ways that you can squeeze a little bit more uh, out of your arrows. So the two things that we're going to talk about today basically are uh, the cutting process. Uh, cutting from both ends in particular as opposed to just one end. And also the process of squaring that arrow up uh, after, after it's been cut and before your components are installed. Now, the reason that uh, it's advantageous to cut from both ends uh, basically comes down to uh, the way an arrow is manufactured. Um, during that process, the straightest portion of the arrow is always going to be in the center of the arrow. So in order to take full advantage of that, uh, cutting from both ends is a way that you can do that. It'll give you the straightest portion uh, of your arrow. Um, Tolerances are very, very high nowadays, and you're already getting arrows that uh, are bang on with, with the specs that, uh, that are advertised. But it's just another way that you can get a little bit extra uh, out of your arrows. So say, for example, you buy a, an economy um, line of arrows, and typically you're looking at about six hundredths of an inch straight, uh, which will get the job done in pretty much any situation. But you want to bump it up a little bit. Well, cutting from both ends, uh, it's quite likely that you could uh, gain a, an extra hundredth, maybe even a two hundredth uh, of an inch uh, straightness in your arrow uh, without paying any more. So there's a, a great way that you can get a straighter arrow just by just by incorporating uh, a simple extra step, really, and, and cutting from the other end. So it's a good practice to get into. Now, the other thing that uh, certainly most guys pay attention to is how true those ends are when they're cut. Now, granted, there are some excellent uh, arrow cutting machines out there, and to the eye, it may appear that, wow, you know, you have a really uh, true, really square cut. Um, but if you have the opportunity to test that, you, you'll see there are some variances there. So again, a good practice is to uh, make sure it's square. Now, there's several tools that you can use uh, to do that. Um, if you don't have access to some of these tools, a real basic way to do it is to uh, make uh, a mount for your arrow that's 100% square and true. And if you have a, a working surface that's square and true, and basically have a sanding block, um, obviously the finer the grit, the better, because you don't want to be taking off a lot. And what you can do is you can put that arrow on that, uh, that holding jig, I guess you can say, and run that block back and forth a few times to square up that end. That's a, a real simple process, but what you're eliminating is uh, an uneven end. Now, how that impacts uh, your arrow, uh, say for example, your knock end, you have a knock that is, is slightly canted or off center, um, that's gonna exert uneven forces on your bow. It's gonna cause it to do um, some strange things that you may or may not be able to pick up on but nonetheless, it's there. On the front end, it becomes uh, even more critical because you're dealing with your field points, your broadheads, and that's gonna throw the weight off a little bit. It's gonna have it to one side or the other. So again, tools that are out there that allow you to both square the carbon, and once your insert's in and sitting square to your shaft, you can actually square the ends of your inserts as well. And so that factors in. These are all little things that you can pay attention to when it comes to building arrows that help. Now, when we're talking about the differences it makes, 
are they measurable differences? Well, none of us have perfect shooting form. Some of us are, are closer than others. And uh, so some may feel that, you know what, these are things that you can actually pick up on. Uh, most of the time though, really honestly, uh, probably a machine would notice the difference. Um, but as a shooter, perhaps not. But that's not to say that uh, it isn't a benefit. At the very least, when it comes to archery, it, it gives an individual a mental advantage. You know that you've done everything possible to that arrow to make sure that the arrow is going to hit its mark, that there are no excuses other than the shooter. So it, it kind of kind of eliminates one of those things. And if you have built your arrows accordingly, it instills more confidence in your equipment, kind of eliminates any doubt. And in the archery game, sometimes that, uh, you know, it goes a long way, actually. A lot of times it does, having that, that mental knowledge that your equipment is is up to the task. So those are just two of the things that we, uh, we covered today, and we look forward to bringing you more and really getting down to the nitty gritty of arrow performance, and uh, we hope that uh, we can help you to, to learn something uh, about uh, arrow flight, aerodynamics, and help you get uh, that perfect arrow.